Because if you talk to the normal person, the normal person that has a salary mentality or an hourly wage mentality, they're going to tell you, don't ever do it. Oh, that's too much work. Why would you pay yourself half for, for twice as much work, right? Well, they're the wrong people to ask, right? So you want to talk to the owners who have created a lot of millions of dollars of wealth for themselves because they'll give you the best advice. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Nicolanti, on a mission to help you. This show is here to educate you, inspire you, and most importantly, motivate you to dominate your competition. Whether you're brand new and just opening your doors or looking to level up your existing business, you're in the right spot. Now, let's get this party started and talk some local business hacks. So, Welcome back to Local, local Business Hacks. I have an exciting guest here today. I'd like to introduce everybody, introduce everybody to George O'Leary, who's the owner and founder of SKS Consulting. George, thank you for being on the call. How are you doing, Dave? Doing awesome. So George has been at, at SKS Consulting providing strategic advice to small and medium-sized businesses for the past 20 years talking about really any and everything financial <laughs> for, for starting to ending that business. So we have some awesome content you're going to get from George today. I'm really excited for him to share his specialty, his knowledge with you guys. So George, you ready? Absolutely. <laughs> so I gave you a bit of an intro, so I kind of stole some of your thunder. But do me a favor, if you could go and just tell our audience a little bit about who you are, just about your background and what you do. Sure. So uh, my name is George O'Leary. I am the president of SKS Consulting. Uh, interesting story on SKS is uh, my family heritage. Uh, my last name O'Leary is from I I Ireland. And uh, in Gaelic, O'Leary stands for strong as the king of the sea. So that's how I created SKS Consulting. And actually my family crest is my logo for the company. That is so cool. I love that. So... What I do is I work with um, both small private and public companies. I mostly work with founders um, to help them grow their businesses and take them to the next level. Uh, you know, founders have a passion for what they do and that's what's really key. I, I was just talking to Dave that, you know, owning a company is not for everybody, right? So, so let me ask this, George. So, I mean, small business owners today and are faced with so many different challenges and so many of them are really bootstrapping I and mean, they're kind of just getting by. And a lot of times when a small business owner decides to make that jump from being an employee to the small business owner, mm -hmm. what they're signing up for that they don't always realize is, hey, they're going and taking a pay cut to work 80 hours a week, <laughs> to work more to make less, <laughs> at least initially. Mm -hmm. So I think a great topic for, for our customers, or I'm sorry, for our audience here today is going to be talking about that bootstrapping and kind of what goes on after that, how, how like start, you start off, pretty much everybody starts off bootstrapping. Yes. And then what that next step looks like. So yeah. I think that'd be a great topic it, for us to talk about here today. It, 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 it is Dave. So, so first and foremost, if as a business owner is thinking about starting a business, there's a few things they should be thinking about. Uh, Rod Cornelius, who is the vice chairman of Cablevision, um, who I worked for for 10 years, uh, the company started off as a small startup cable and, and cable business and sold for Time Warner uh, for $2.8 billion. <laughs> um, and, and so, uh, but Rod, used, Rod gave me great advice about two things. One is cash is king. So when bootstrapping your company is spend what you have, right? And then number two is you should be planning your exit on the day you start your business, right? Most business owners don't think about that. And then they're married to their business until they die. Um, so, but what you really want to do is plan for how big you want to get the company, uh, understand what valuations are and how to value your company. Uh, most business owners, small business owners don't have that expertise, so to speak. Um, so what I'm hearing real quick is that even for people who are bootstrapping, I mean, you have to be creative. And if you don't have that financial background, which mm -hmm. most small business owners don't, I mean, you're not opening up a restaurant because you're a financial guy. Right. You're not open up a yoga right. studio. You're usually a great cook or something like that. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. So if you don't have that knowledge yourself or from an immediate family member, then you may have to be creative in how you go and bring that information into your business. I mean, offer shares of the company, ownership of the company, partnering up with that person if you can't outright afford to pay for that consulting service. Well, well this is one of the things I work with founders and what people miss is how important a founder is for the growth of a company. 
because that passion carries with the founder, right? So when I get involved with companies, I'm always figuring out the right role for the founder versus trying to replace founders. You know, people go wrong by thinking, okay, when you get to the next level, all right, let's get rid of the founder. That's the biggest mistake any like investors can, t- can make because the founder has that unique talent of recognizing the passion of this business, right? So the key though is one, you know, the founder is going to be great at certain things and make sure that the founder is doing those things that he's great at. Because what happens is like, it's like the cookie maker who's spending time with accounting and then uh, finance when they should be making cookies, right? That kind of <laughs> idea. And, and so you want to make sure the founder is doing what they love. And, and then the only way to do that is you build a team of people that don't have your strengths. So if a founder has certain strengths, make sure he builds a team of people that have different strengths than he has. So that's something very, very important for a small business to be successful is to make sure you build a team with different talents, people having different talents so that all areas of your company can be covered, right? And and so that's one of the key elements, I think. Yeah, that's extremely important. I mean, that differentiation of talent and obviously is based off of the founder. I think his founder is the one who's going to provide the energy and the drive and everything else. And they need to have that supporting cast in there. It kind of fills the holes in their, I don't want to say in their ability to achieve success in certain categories, but I mean, some people are, are a perfect match for X, Y, Z, and they need help with ABC. Well, <laughs> well, as I was, as you and I were talking earlier, Dave, you know, it's contagious, right? That founder's mm-hmm. energy is contagious, right? Where if, if a founder can inspire, all of a sudden, all the employees are now inspired to make sure this company is doing great. And, and listen, there's a reason nine out of 10 businesses fail, small businesses fail, is because it's so hard to own and run a small business. You know, how do you, how do you grow it profitably, you know, when you have limited resources? Right. And at what point do you get to a certain stage where now it's time to bring in outside investment? And how do you do that? And one of the keys, right? So one is the founders in, inspiring people to make sure everything gets done. But one of the keys is, one, when you start your business, to think about the exit. But two, along the way, think about how does valuation work and how do I value my company, right? Because either you're going to value it way too high and then therefore no one's going to be interested in investing, or you're going to value it way too low and then your investors are going to own too much of your company that you gave up because you just didn't have that expertise in how to value mm-hmm. a business. So, so one of the things, and I've worked with Andre on this, is you go to the public markets and you look at the multi-billion dollar companies in your industry and you see what they're valued at. Because in a public company, you, you know their, their stock price, you know how many shares they have, so you know the absolute market value of their company. Mm-hmm. And then you know how much revenue they have because it's publicly reported and or, or what their profitability is. So you can calculate what the, um, <laughs> what the um, valuation is based on revenue, what the value, you know, is it 10 times revenue? Is it 20 times revenue? That kind of thing. Or is it 50 times earnings or hundred times earnings? So you can point to those big public companies and then you work backwards. You discount yourself because you're a pro- small private business, but you're growing fast. Mm-hmm. Those are the kind of things. So there's two other important things for a growing small company is one, do it profitably because you have limited resources. You don't really have a choice. But the second is growth. You want to make sure you're able to grow your business, right? And growing a business means you get, you know, you're providing a product or a service that people need, right? And then you know how to sell it, right? So, you know, every single person in a company is a salesperson. That's the best thing in the world, right? So you have a growing business because you're actually helping people create value for their own businesses. And that's a great way to create value for your own business, for your own company as well. That's great stuff. So let's kind of, we're talking about valuations and that, that's great stuff. But I want to go and scale it back just a little bit. So let's say somebody is bootstrapping and they're very, very, I mean, cash is king. You spend what you have. And you're yeah. sure if you don't go too far or else you're going to be mm-hmm. well, not in business much very long. <laughs> so you want to go, let's talk about the step where it goes from bootstrapping to growing a little bit. And yes. if, if that's something that requires outside funds, how to determine that, or how to know when a small business is ready to take that next step. Yep. So there's something that I, um, that I think of Tony Robbins says this all the time. And it's so true is people overestimate what they can do in one year and totally underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Right. And the reason I mentioned that is 
when you're going to own your own company, you want to think about the long term, right? And the reason you, you know, to your point, you're working twice as long and paying yourself half the price is because you have ownership, right? And there's a very big difference in a salary. And, and listen, getting paid a salary and, and living that lifestyle is a great lifestyle, right? There's no complaints there, but it takes a unique individual to want to be a business owner. And a business owner is all about creating true value, like, like um, generational wealth. And generational wealth is going to come not from your salary you're going to make, right? Because even if you're a basketball player and you're making millions of dollars a year, you're going to spend millions of dollars a year because that's a salary mentality, mm -hmm. not a business owner's mentality. A business owner's mentality is to really think for the long term about creating real value, creating real wealth, right? And real wealth comes from ownership. And that's that simple, right? So, so you want to make, that's why valuations are so important. Because as a business owner, you start off owning 100% of your business and how you give up ownership and how you value your business is going to determine whether you're giving up too much ownership or you're not giving, you know, <laughs> you know, owning 100% of $10 is, is still only $10, right? <laughs> but as you grow and now you own, now you own 50% of a $2 million business or, you know, or you own 45% or 25% of a hundred million dollar business, you're still worth $25 million, right? So, mm -hmm. so what's key is making sure that you give up ownership at the right time for the right price, right? So those are some of the key elements um, for, and that's why owning a business is one, not for everybody. It's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of pain and it's gonna take years. So it might take you five years bootstrapping your company to get to a point where you, it's time to bring in outside investment. Right, and that's a perfect case. Uh, case study is Referizer. Right, Referizer grew the business from zero to a two million dollar business in five years. But now we're at a point where it's time to bring in outside capital so we can go from that two million right. to sixty million in the next five years. And that's what our plan is to do that. How does uh, average Joe Schmo and Main and Main Street USA, where's small business? How do they even go about finding out what what their valuation is? Who, yes. who would they talk to? Great question. So, you know, you can go to bankers and that kind of thing. But to me, you know, Tony Robbins says another thing. Who you put yourself around is how your life is going to go, right? So if I'm a business owner, what I'm going to do, especially if I'm a brand new business owner and I'm just starting a business, I'm going to look in my neighborhood. And that's what's so great about Referizer and the small local businesses is there's a lot of small local businesses around you. And find the ones that have been there the longest, find the ones that you like, that you believe in, and start building relationships with those owners, right? Because they're going to be, you're going to get the best advice from people who have done it before. Because if you talk to the normal person, the normal person that has a salary mentality or an hourly wage mentality, they're going to tell you, don't ever do it. Oh, that's too much work. Why would you pay yourself half for, for twice as much work, right? Well, they're the wrong people to ask, right? So you want to talk to the owners who have created a lot of millions of dollars of wealth for themselves because they'll give you the best advice, right? So, so I would say start there, start building friendships and relationships with business owners if you're going to be a business owner. So you're around people that understand what you're going through and they're probably going to provide you really good advice uh, from that. Yeah. And then- Spheres of influence, yep. <laughs> yeah, and those business owners will have had somebody that gave them- advice on their valuation that they could recommend. So, so that's why I say start with the other business owners because they're going to understand mm -hmm. you, but they're also going to have gone through the pains that you're going through. So they'll be able to provide you advice on where to go. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I love working with founders because they have that raw passion for their business and they don't know everything. And the best founders are the ones that know they don't know everything. Right? <laughs> and because they're the ones that are probably going to hire the right people and build a team around themselves that are going to make themselves successful. Yep. It's kind of that old cliche, which is, which is still rings so true. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. So I feel sorry for you right now, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not at all. Not at all. Thanks, Dave, but not at all. I, so it's, I, something where it's really important I mean, to surround yourself with people that mm -hmm. you want to emulate that you want to kind of copy their success or, or hack what they're doing. Because yep. that's the cool thing about successful people. They're willing to share. Yep. They love to share. They love to help. 
<laughs> well, well, listen, my mentors in business are all $100 million people and higher, right? And mm -hmm. I surround myself with them because that's what I aspire to. Right. And, um, you know, and they're the ones that give me the best advice on how to get there, for sure. So That's great. So awesome stuff so far, George. So one thing that kind of struck me a, a little bit sideways earlier when you said it, but I, I understand, but I want to dig into it a little bit more. Please. Is the, you had said something along the lines of the day you start your business, the day you open your business. Mm -hmm. You need to think about exiting your business. Uh -huh. And I know that's something that the majority of our audience, I'm guessing, that's new to them. Yeah. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit. So tell me what you mean by that and how you can actually start planning your exit. Exactly. Okay. So first and foremost, you want to figure out based on how old you are, right? Like Andre's a young man. So he probably has a 20-year exit, right? So you want to think about that. Okay. I don't want to sell my business for 20 years. What is it going to take? How, how long, 20 years from now, do I want the business to be, right? So you want to set big goals for yourself, right? So if you're going to, if you're going to set a goal for 20 years from now, you want to set it to be a billion dollar company by way of example, right? And, or if you're, you know, if you're my age, close to 60 years old, and I'm going to start a new business, I'm going to say, all right, I got a 10 year window to do this or a five year window to do this. I'm not right. going to set my goal to be a billion dollar goal. I might set my goal to be a, you know, 50 million or a hundred million dollar goal before I'm going to sell that business. So, so Paul, the biggest question you want to ask yourself is how long do I want to be doing this? Do I want to be doing this for the rest of my life or how much of a life do you have left? Right? So it depends on when you're starting a business. Now, by the way, it's not a requirement to be only to be 20 years old or 30 years old to start your business. There's a lot of people in their, in their mid fifties and mid sixties that are starting businesses as well, because they have a passion for something and they, they probably work 20 years or 30 years getting the experience necessary to now how to know how to run their own business. Right. And, and so, um, so that's the key, right? So your first question is how long do I want to be doing this? And then based on that, you know, what, what do I, you know, what do I want to end with? Like, you know, generational wealth, how much is that? Not, for, you know, it's funny because, you know, you talk about if I had a million dollars, what that would mean for me, right? <laughs> and that's a mindset for some small business owners. If I can get to a million dollars, that'd be great. If I can sell my business for a million dollars, that'd be great. And by the way, that is great, right? Like not everyone, mm -hmm. you know, a very small majority of, uh, you know, minority of people own have a million dollars or more. But so you can set that goal for yourself. Or you could be like Andre and set your goal for, I want to have a hundred million dollars, right? I mm -hmm. want to build a company where it's worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars um, before I ever want to exit, right? <laughs> so you need, a, you need a longer term view to have mm -hmm. that bigger view. So, so that's the starting point. So when you set that, now you can plan for it, right? Because know that if you're going to bootstrap your company, it's going to take you a good five years to get to a size where you would have anyone interested in investing in it, most likely, right? And right. Uh, so, so that's going to be a key. And then, um, and then the, you know, and then that longevity. And then how how big is big for you, right? Because because big is defined in everyone's mind differently, right? So, like for me, you know, I've set a target for myself. I want to be worth a hundred million dollars or more. And and so you know, that's not for everybody. That takes a lot of work to get there, right? And, 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 you know, for me, the way I do it is I have a small ownership in a lot of different businesses. That's how I, that's how I do it. Uh, a great example. So a company I started working with six years ago, Timios Holdings, they're in the real estate business. They do escrow and title insurance. They were doing 20 million and losing 3 million at the time when I got involved with them. Six years later, we did $80 million and made 11 million. And we paid out $20 million worth of dividends during that six year period I got involved with them. We just sold to a NASDAQ company for $45 million. Now, you know, that, that's the kind of story and, and that's the kind of businesses that I love to get involved in. The, the kind that are struggling, right? They're losing money, it's not easy. Now, by the way, you can't lose $3 million unless you have other people's money, right? <laughs> but, but trust me, investors don't like losing $3 million, right? For sure. So the, it was the investor that actually brought me into Timios to help. And then we turned it around. And in six years, instead of losing $3 million a year, we ended up paying $20 million a dividend. So um, those are the kind of success stories. And those are the kind of things that I like to get involved in and turn things around for. for That's business. awesome. So you kind of, you beat me to it, George. I was going to ask you about a success story or, or an inspiring client. So I think we have that there. We can check that box off. <laughs> but I want to I ask you about that though. So 
the, 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 uh, you said it was a real estate company. Was that a title company? Yeah, it, it, they, they did escrow and title insurance. Oh, uh, escrow and title insurance. Gotcha. That's so right. when you came in, how many years in business have they been when, at the time when you came in? Approximately. Great, great question. So um, they had started about four years earlier. Okay. And, um, but uh, <laughs> their background, the, the management's background was really super strong. Matter of fact, uh, what I did is I got rid of the people on the top layer that knew nothing about the business. And I stuck with the, the core management team. And that's what made the company successful. It, kind of what I had mentioned before. Most right. people lose the fact that the founder is the most important part of a growing company. And so what I did is I partnered with the founder and I said, okay, you run your business. All right, let's figure out what's what you need. And then let's get rid of all the things that are interfering with what you need. And that's how we were, we ended up being uh, very successful with that. And then, so that's awesome. So let, let's combine the last two topics. And so that great case study. So you, we talked about exit plan with these guys. Mm-hmm. So they were in business four years, plus or minus a little bit when you came in and how long were you working with them before they six sold? years, six, six years, so 10 years total. Yep. So when you came in as a consultant, did you kind of restructure or talk about a new exit plan? Well, what we or did was, was their plan? Yeah, no, it's a great question. What we did was they were a public company. Um, they ended up uh, selling to a public company and that was part of the issue. So we actually took, in this particular case, we took it private. We took a public company private. It's kind of backwards. <laughs> I will tell you, Sometimes. In, most, in most cases, it works the other way around. And in most mm. cases, I would recommend to do it the other way around. But they mm. were public, but they had such a small number of public shareholders that they had all the cost of being a public company, but none of the value of being a public company. So that's why we took it private. Mm -hmm. And then once we took it private, I was able to take the founder and really focus on his strengths to grow that business. And then really just helped um, with the relationship with the investors. Those are some of the things that I had provided for them. Uh, But it was really letting the founder and his team um, do what they knew how to do best and Mm -hmm. just support that really. And that was the key to that success story for sure. So when you came in, I mean, did they, do you have any idea? I don't know if this came up. I'm guessing it probably did, but when they founded that, the title and escrow company, do they have a 10 year exit plan or is that something that the view can nope. change when you came in? Nope. It's a great question. So uh, we did actually the, the CEO uh, and I had a, on our first meeting, we had a conversation of what would, what would it look like, right. To be a good exit for you and your mm-hmm. family. Right. Um, and in his case, uh, a very unique case, unfortunately, and, and he's a fighter and a more determined guy than I know of anyone else. Uh, his name is Trevor Stouffer. He ended up getting ALS um, three years ago. And, and so that did change our trajectory for when we wanted to sell. So we had talked about selling at $100 million when we got to $100 million. Um, and so we ended up selling a little bit early, a few years. We probably had another five years to our business plan to sell. Um, and we, so, and, but we were, one, we grew a lot faster in that six year period than, than otherwise uh, we, we could have thought. Um, but secondly, we decided to sell because of what happened with his health. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but um, we sold for 45 million cash. It was a great deal. And, uh, you know, and his family now has generational wealth for right. his wife and kids. And that was very important to, to all of us. Um, and, but if, if his health didn't change, uh, we probably would have had a, another five years in the plan and we probably would have sold for 150 million or something like that. That was, that was more of the longer term target mm-hmm. before his health changed. So, so in, in this case, it was a kind of a unique thing with sure. uh, um, something so- like that. What was it saying? It's something like God scoffs at the best laid plans. <laughs> you can't be in control of everything. Exactly. Um, exactly. That's really interesting. So that, that's an awesome case study and a great description of how you help small businesses grow. And so I love hearing that. Um, and it's really something where you need to take that step back when you're starting, or, or even if you haven't done this now, is it ever too late to come up with an exit plan? I mean, I think I know the answer, but yeah, no, <laughs> you don't have one. Right. You know, it's, it's so two things I think of is one, right. Um, better late than never. Right. And, uh, and number two, 
my grandfather used to always say, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today, right? So, so, if, you don't, so if you don't have an exit plan yet, it's never too late, right? But do it today, you know, <laughs> start thinking about it today. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to get to? How large do you want to get to? Because without a plan, you know, you'll, you'll go through life. And if you're lucky, you'll do pretty well, right? But if you have a plan, you're usually much better chances of success mm -hmm. and getting to where you want to get to if, versus not having a plan. So, so planning out your exit strategy is one of the key elements to um, getting there and making sure you get there. Now, you might get there a lot sooner. You might get there, might take a little longer. But if you have your plan and you set your, 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 you know, you set your sights to that, um, you got a, you know, you got a, a 10% chance of success where nine, nine out of 10 companies fail. Mm -hmm. So you want to be that 10%. Do everything you can to put yourself in that 10% spot. That's right. Because, uh, because it's not easy. You know, the one thing I would say, uh, Dave, that's most important to me is hard work and determination get you very far in life. There's, you know, there's a great book. Um, it talks about education and how, you know, people with Harvard degrees and Yale degrees and things like that, it's so competitive and they work so hard to get there, you know, and it's so hard to be the top percentage of the smartest people in the world. But usually what you find is, you know, those are not the people that have the best success stories. It's, you know, Alan Geary, who was, uh, who was the owner and founder of Cablevision Industries, where I kind of grew up in my business life and, and learned from Rod Cornelius, uh, who was the vice chairman of that company. Alan Geary had a five-year education. He had a fifth grade education and it was the right time at the right place. You know, he started cable television uh, in the rural markets where people didn't get good reception, right? <laughs> and so he built out, he ended up being the largest privately owned cable operator and sold to Time Warner for $2.8 billion, right? With a fifth grade education. So it's not always the smartest person in the room that wins. It's the one that's most determined and willing yeah. to work the hardest and take the biggest, take the biggest risk. So With big true. risk comes big rewards. Great words, great words. So let me ask this, George. So I, I, it's fun seeing you here on Zoom. I can see your eyes lighting up as you're talking about some of some of your people you've worked with in the past, uh, people companies you're working with, consulting with. What drives you? I mean, where do you get your energy from? Yeah. Well, um, you know, probably my heritage, my Irish heritage. You know. My grandfather came over from Ireland when he was 21 years old uh, and worked on the railroad. My father was a New York City cop for 20 years, you know, and, and when we grew up, you know, we had three boys and a girl. I was, I was number three, you know, and we grew up where you were getting a college education, right? It was from the day we were born, we were going to get a college education. And, uh, you know, and that was inspiring, you know. I think with me personally, I had... I had dyslexia, I have dyslexia. And as a child, what they say is you're usually told, especially my age, right? Back then, they didn't know a lot about that. Um, you were told you were stupid, right? And so, you know, all through grammar school, you know, I had two older brothers that were very smart, all A students, and I could barely read because of my dyslexia. And so my oldest brother, Dennis, would work with me, make sure I would get through school. And I just learned how to work harder than everyone else. And, and so that's really my drive in life, right? So all of a sudden I went from, uh, you know, getting C's and D's all through grammar school to getting, you know, C's and B's in high school. And then I got all A's and, and B's in college. I ended up graduating with honors with a magna cum laude uh, degree in, when I went to university at Siena College. And, you know, if you would have went back, you know, 15 years, never would have expected, no one would have ever expected that I would have that kind of success in school. What would your uh, fifth grade teacher think you're here? You'd be at right now. <laughs> my, my, well, well, it's funny because my dad is a very big, was a very big man and, and a cop in New York. So, you know, the, and we went to Catholic school our whole, our whole life. Mm -hmm. We went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, Catholic university I went to. Um, and, and in third grade, they wanted to leave me back. And my father's like, my son is not going to be left back. And that probably drove me, right? Like the fact that my father believed in me so much that would not allow the school to leave me back mm -hmm. uh, really drove me to work harder and, and, and do whatever it took um, to make sure that I figured out how to be successful, right? I did it with my grades. And then from there, you know, and I love to work. So that was another, 
you know, I, I told my, my 15 year old daughter uh, uh, last year, she, she wanted to get a car when she was 16. I said, go get a job, you know? And she's like, I'm only 15. I said, go get a job. I worked in 14, right? And, okay. and when you read about some of the most successful people, a lot of CEOs and things like that, um, most of them started work very young in life, right? So as a parent, if you want to get your child thinking about being a business owner someday, get them, get them a job at 14 or 15 years old. It'll make such a big difference in their life. Now my daughter is 16 years old. She's been working for over a year. She works really hard um, and it's motivating. I love to see it. She comes home. She's like, oh, I made this much money today. She's a hostess <laughs> at a really high-end restaurant. And that's uh, awesome. And I love that about, you know, the thought process of that, you know, create that mindset of, of working mm -hmm. hard and determination, get you so far in life uh, for everyone, you know? And, and, and so she, she, by the way, is thinking about what university she's going to go to, right? So that's the mindset you want to create for your children um, to think about that. Now, by the way, some of the best business owners, you know, Alan Geary, who had a fifth, a fifth grade education, you know, you look at all those successful um, guys like Bill Gates and, um, you know, left school, right? <laughs> left Harvard or Yale, but they left school to create their own businesses. So yep. education isn't necessarily the key, but to be thinking that way, right? To, mm -hmm. you know, to learn, you know, I, I remember reading about Henry Ford, right? And Henry Ford, they questioned him, you know, how do you know so much, blah, blah, blah. And he says, it's not me. I, you know, Henry Ford created the Ford Motor Company, right? He said, it's not me. I know to hire, I have one talent to hire the right people that are much <laughs> smarter than me, right? And, and that's the key, right? Is, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, you know, and, you know, and, and it's funny, one of the things I always say too, and, and I'm sure I, it's not me who said it, but I've read it and, and I, and I believe in it is you want to listen a lot more than talk, right? When you're, when you're in a room, it, the, the people who are normally the smartest people in the room are the ones listening the most and not <laughs> doing all the talking, right? And, and Very true. Because that's the way you become smarter is you learn, you learn from other people. And you never stop learning. And it's, Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you went to college, finished college, didn't go. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> never right. Never stop learning. That, that's right. And, I've never seen and, and it's such a great lesson in life is that hard work and determination will get you further than most other things, right? Yep. And that's why, that's why I say, you know, I'll, I'll end this conversation, Dave, where, you know, this, being a business owner is not for everybody. Right. And and living a life of an employee and, you know, either salary or hourly wage, it's a good life. You know, it's, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But if you want to be a business owner, one, it's lonely at the top. Number two, it takes a ton of work. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you think you're going to work, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, being a business owner is not for you. <laughs> right. And uh, but there's such rewards from it. There's rewards from seeing a successful business. There's a rewards from seeing your clients get real value in what you're offering. The biggest reward for me in, in running businesses is seeing employees blossom and grow, right? I, I had started my own company um, and grew a business from five to 40 million in four years and sold it. But one of the things I'm most proud of is my entire management team after we sold the business, all became business owners themselves. So, you know, for me, what my role was in teaching them was how to be a business owner, right? And Alan Geary, when he, you know, I was a young employee in my 20s working for Alan Geary, and I would spend Saturdays, eight hours walking the grounds as he was building his, his beautiful complex. And I would just suck in, you know, he would just teach me so many things about being a business owner. And then when we sold, when Cablevision sold, I went and became a business owner and I've never looked back, right? <laughs> and, and I do, I, I, I really <laughs> believe that because of what Alan taught me, you know, as a business owner, you know, it stuck with me for me to actually know how to be a good business owner, right? So, so to me, I think that's a key is, you know, again, who you put yourself around is who you become. And, uh, and know that business ownership is not for everyone, but it's a, such a rewarding thing. And when you can have your entire management team start their own businesses after you've worked with them, you know, for four years, uh, that is probably one of the things I'm most proud of. That's a big satisfaction, feeling of satisfaction right there for sure. And yes. to have that impact, that's great. So George, this has been awesome. Um, totally, every minute of this, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're obviously going to get some great content from this. And remember, small business owners out there, 
it's not too late. I mean, George said some really interesting words when you think about it. When you start your business, you're supposed to have your exit plan as well. If you don't, hey, don't panic. Don't hit the panic button. <laughs> it's never too late to start. Yeah. So start lay that groundwork for what your future is going to be. And you have a lot of say in that. And everything else falls into place. And you will need some help. Surround yourself with the right people. But as soon as you start, have that exit plan in place. It's so important yeah. for everybody. Great words, George. Thank um, you, David. Appreciate it. Again, I appreciate it every minute here. Best of luck to you. Hey, one last thing, George. How can our audience find you? Yep, great. Okay. So uh, I have a website. It's sksconsulting.us. Dot .us, okay. awesome. We'll include that in the show notes and put that below here in, in the podcast and see it in the show notes. So, George, thank you very much for your time. And we'll talk to you soon, but thank you very much. Hey, my pleasure, Dave. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye. Wow. So that was just some incredible stuff. So many tips, tricks, and things to implement. Remember, that was a lot of advice that was just shared right there. Advice that every type of business can use. So remember, find those couple of things that are fit for you. Figure out a plan, how to implement them, what to do. Don't try and do everything all at once right away. Remember that old saying, that old question, how do you eat an elephant? Well, if you know the phrase, you probably know where I'm going with this. But you can't do everything at, a, at one time. Remember, you eat that elephant simply one bite at a time. Set your plan, stick to it. So I want to give thanks to our awesome guest. If you want to find out more about today's topic, and guests, make sure to check out our show notes. Uh, all the guest information is there on our website, and that website is localbusinesshacks.com. Now, there's a dash between each word, so it's www.local-business-hacks.com. Check that out. And, of course, I want to give a big thanks to you for listening. So if you enjoyed this episode, please let us know. Leave a review on whatever service you're listening to this on. And if you have any questions or just want to keep the party going, please join our Facebook group at Local Business Hacks. Till next time, cheers.